it wasn't clickbait. He was pretty pumped. Yeah. Rogan goes. I should have told you guys to hide your kids. I did right. So Joe Rogan is sharp enough to ask, is this an underserved niche? And there's some things here that I touched on that I think are very necessary. So let's listen to it. Bruce Lawn. Joe Rogan heard about The Chosen. And the title for this video says, Joe Rogan shocked by how many views The Chosen has. Now, first of all, those of you goobers that be coming for me talking about clickbait, no disrespect to whoever clipped this up because they made my life easier. <laughs> but this title is, is clickbait, okay? He was not shocked, but it is interesting what is said here and the fact that he's hearing about it. And I think the precedent mm -hmm. this sets for entertainment and specifically for Christians in media and entertainment. Well, even, even the fact that Christians can make a show so good that comedians are talking about it on the Joe Rogan podcast, yes. the biggest podcast in the world, yes. and not roasting it. Yes, and that is good. What if it becomes just like two giant movie studios? Yeah. You know, that's it. It's the only way, place you can get your movie made. So, but that's where it's, there's a show uh, called The Chosen. You heard of that? No. And it's about uh, the life of, uh, it's about Jesus, about the life of Christ. And the guys that, I met the guys that like did this. They were, they're, 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 I, this studio I believe was behind, they do, you know, dry bar comedy. Like no. that was clean. It was like on Facebook. So, first of all, shout out to him for bringing this up. It was a like, shout out to Dallas Jenkins, Daryl Eves, uh, all super cool guys. Um, and the fact that this is the, this is the second time Daryl was getting brought up on Rogan. Mr. Beast brought up Daryl Eves. Daryl Eves oh, yeah, yeah. is the Mormon executive producer um, of The Chosen. And, and, of course, Dallas has been on the channel. These are guys I'm friendly with. Um, so I think this is super dope that this is even being brought up in this context. And there's some things here that I think that I touched on that I think are very necessary. So let's listen to this. On faith, the ones that is all clean, they've been on Facebook. But this Chosen's that they made is got, it's like through the roof how many people have watched this show. What is it about? Uh, Christ. And it was uh, Jesus. I think it's through the perspective of the, the people. Is, you know, most things are through Jesus' perspective. And this is through the, uh, like, people that are around theirs' perspective. I don't know a ton. I've only seen, I've only seen like a little. I haven't got to watch the whole thing. But it's got... It, the views of it, it was. I think you can buy it on Amazon shit. now. But they the just news. made their. So, so it wasn't clickbait. He was pretty pumped. Yeah. Rogan goes, holy crap, holy ish. I should have told you guys to hide your kids. I your wife. He's pretty pumped. Yeah. Holy ish. Look at the views. Four hundred ten. I don't even know how to say that number. <laughs> four hundred and hold on. Four hundred and ten million one hundred and sixty eight thousand views. Number okay. so high, he doesn't even know how to say it. That's a lot, guys. That's a that's a lot of views. And so Rogan is bugging out off of an episode. Right? A trailer that only got 5 million views. This joint got almost half a billion views. Whew! A billion? A billy. That's, that's huge. Wow. That's huge. For context, uh, a guy like The Professor, who is, is a friend of the channel, basketball legend, he's in a new documentary on Netflix, right? He has 5 million subscribers. For context, he's been on YouTube for 10 years. The Professor just cracked a billion views on wow. YouTube. Wow. Okay. No so, way. So this is just the episodes. This isn't counting YouTube views. So just the episodes, they've locked in almost half of what the professor has locked in in his entirety on YouTube. Absolutely. In the, what, four or five years that the Chosen have been yep. gone. Yep. Let's play the rest wow. of the video. Wow. That's nuts. And so they just went and they made an app called The Chosen, and you went to that app and you watched that show. And I believe it got, I mean, millions upon millions of views. And it's a series, and it was a very, they did all the ad behind it. They did all the, very word of mouth, very, but I think the ads and all that stuff behind it, and they just started this. They're just, they're just like, that's their thing. They're the chosen. And then it was an app, and you go watch that show there. That's wild. Then do you think that speaks to an opportunity Pause for it. anyone to do that with any kind of film? Or do you think that speaks to, like, a, a lack of representation of, like, Christian films? I think it's, I mean, th that helps. Pause but it. It, I think anyone So Joe Rogan asked a, a brilliant question. Yeah. Lack of representation in Christian films. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if Nate Bargatze, the comedian, mm -hmm. is Christian or Catholic, some sort oh, okay. of faith okay. world. He's, all his comedy is super clean. Okay. He, he doesn't swear. Like, he's known for that. Okay. Clean comedy. Shout out to him. So I think that's why he was mixing in the circles with the dry bar comedy Aha. like he was talking about. Aha, okay. Um, and so I wouldn't be surprised at all, especially if he knows what The Chosen is. He's yeah. watching. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. referring it to Christ. He's at, so Joe Rogan is sharp enough to ask, like, is this an underserved niche? Yeah. And, and especially since people don't really think of Christianity like that in, in, in the, the secular market. It's mm -hmm. viewed as something that is taboo. Mm -hmm. You know, Christians are bigoted, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. And he actually realizes, well, there's actually a, a, a large portion of Christianity that is underrepresented and, and um, kind of 
looked down upon, mm -hmm. especially in the industry. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people that are Jesus curious that have never picked up a Bible, never heard of the gospel, and are and are probably down to check out this chosen series. Yeah, you know, and that and that's if you guys haven't, so I put it up right here where they had their documentary of showing the chosen to Gen Z, which I thought was very, very, very well done. Yeah, and I, th I think people are just looking for good media and good yes. shows. Yes, so like it's, I think people are getting a little bored with YouTube sometimes. Mm. Like with the Mr. Beast era, it can be overstimulating. Mm -hmm. If you sit down to watch a good, well-produced, traditional, yeah. almost style show, yep. it can be therapeutic, almost relaxing. Yeah, you know, turn yep. dim the lights, popcorn, yep. and you put a show on. Yep. So now the chosen, there's a Christian Christian media being produced at that level. Yep. that is, you know, people are like, I don't really. I'm not Christian, but the story is interesting enough. Mm -hmm. Whatever, mm -hmm. I'll watch it. And you got to think that is being a, a film about Christ. That's I mean, a very like you know. I mean, a lot, everybody's a lot of people are Christians here. Like crazy about a Christian. So yeah. people do want to go see that, and that's not, and that could not be being shown. But it also just shows you, you know, it's all about specials and all this stuff where you could be like, I, you could go like, I don't know if I go find an audience. And this audience wants to do it. Like, why don't you have? I could have a Nate Bargatze app, and I put my specials on there. Then, right. And I there you have Direct a Joe consumer. app. And you do the specials, and then you do. Maybe you're like, I want to write a TV show and shoot it with my friends. Shout out to the chosen. Shout out to them for uh, for, for for being talked about on the biggest podcast in the world. And then the 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 component of it of hey, this is serving a underserved niche that has a demand, the Christian audience. However, it's executing at a high level and it's all self-contained. They're not reliant on an algorithm. They're not reliant on anything they mm -hmm. got in their market. They go direct to consumer and it's clearly successful. And I think, in my opinion, if you are a person of faith trying to make media, that should encourage you. We need more Christian media companies. What are your thoughts on that? Like, what, And what are your thoughts on kind of this um, independent world we live in where you can create things from your own home mm -hmm. and... Uh, versus like a, a Christian company that would produce content for other people. I mean, because we're already prepping mm -hmm. years in advance mm -hmm. for a possible lateral move mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. by naming this channel Bless God Studios. Yeah, 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 no, that's a great point. And, and yes, we do. However, that requires everyone coming together and pulling their resources, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning like, I'm a, a chosen monthly contributor. You know, yeah, they got, it's like fifteen bucks a month. Like I, 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 and I support other Christian creators on Patreon that I believe in. Yep. So if that is something you value, I think we all collectively carve out room in our budget to support these media companies, right? Yeah. Because even even the stuff that we want to do, like you guys were like, hey, um, we loved. Uh, like the, this podcast studio got funded through Super Chats, right? But even I want to do a series. I want to bring back the stop quoting that Bible verse. I would get together different pastors. We did it virtually. And now that things are opening up, I don't want to do a bunch of virtual stuff. Yeah. But I was having this idea, like how dope would it be to rent out a studio and to get together and get like emerging pastors together that, that shepherd local churches, right? I'm thinking Kurt Kennedy. I'm thinking Sho Baraka out of yep. Atlanta. I'm thinking Trey Van Camp out of Phoenix. Get all of these different pastors together that actually pastor churches. Yep. Right. They're not just YouTubers like me. They actually have local churches. So one, it becomes a billboard mm -hmm. for their church, local churches, and yeah. then we go in and talk about all the spicy conversations mm -hmm. that you guys want to hear about, and we shoot to get we we get together and we bat shoot ten episodes. And we call it Stop Quoting That Bible Verse or whatever. And we literally just cover all the spectrum, and it's a wide spectrum of people. Yeah. And I think that would be super fire. You know, it's actually kind of crazy thinking back how ahead of their time Elephant Room was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, and that's kind of like the Elephant Room idea, except I would want to do it with non-celebrity pastors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even just thinking back, it's like, oh, that's really that's actually really interesting Christian media yep. that they made in the style of a, almost a game show with mm -hmm. the cameras and the live audience and stuff yep. like that. But yeah, I think even with this podcast, we are just hitting this this cusp of um, creating shows outside of the main right. live show right. that actually takes funding and we're kind of seeing what that's like getting funding from an audience to yep. put this together. And right. It goes back to funding. Mm. If you guys want to see that, like we we have two hundred thousand subscribers, 200, 220 thousand subscribers, and we we stay at five hundred Patreon. Yeah, right. So if like, and shout out to the channel members, right? But if you guys want to see that kind of stuff, then you have to be willing to contribute. And again, guys, we're super frugal around here. We're literally yeah. in the living room of a 
900 square foot condo. We were on a podcast. You were on a podcast. I went with you. And we walked into the room and it was on Hollywood Boulevard, right? Mm -hmm. Or uh, yeah. Beverly yeah. Hills Boulevard, Beverly whatever. Hills Boulevard. And we walk in. This is where the studio is. Beautiful. AC is pumping. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's chilly in there. Mm -hmm. We're almost putting hoodies on. It's 95 degrees out. There's a, a nice, beautiful, big couch, a big wraparound desk, cinema cameras mounted to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And there's probably about, what, four, four people running the behind-the-scenes show, cutting the camera, yep. doing the OBS, yep. doing behind-the-scenes photos. And then there were the hosts and you. Mm -hmm. Man, we're light. We, Rusan runs all this stuff himself. Yeah. Like, we don't have behind-the-scenes <laughs> crew. We don't have... Yep. Uh, 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 you know, a, a, an official retail space. Yep. Our AC barely worked. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. frugal. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, 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 but someone said, like, what about the inaccuracies of the chosen? What about them? What about the inaccuracies of your pastor? What mm. about the inaccuracies <laughs> of whatever, right? Like, everybody's going to have inaccuracies. Yeah. If you don't like the ina inaccuracies, don't support it. Don't watch it. Yeah, the chosen is probably doing uh, more work, more net positive work. Absolutely for, more net positive work. For um, the kingdom yes. than... It's doing damage. Yeah, and, and it's this thing, like, we, we got to stop trying to find something to be upset about. Yeah. You watch enough of my videos, guys, you're going to find something to be upset about. A thousand plus videos. You're going to find something you disagree about. But if we're talking on a macro level, I would like to believe that The Chosen is adding a net positive to yeah. the furthering of the gospel. What we're doing is adding a net positive to the furthering of the gospel. There's all kinds, of, well, I guess stuff from a year ago, six months ago that I'm like, Psh. Yesterday's live stream. What was yesterday's live There's some. We're just goofing off. Yeah. We're having a good time. Yeah, yeah. People are calling us to do a Bible study, and we're yes. like, hey, man, sometimes yes. we're just had a little too much mate. <laughs> the caffeine's hitting different, and yeah. we just want to joke. The Chosen is not a Bible story. They've said that over and over. They're mm. inspired by the Bible. It is what it is. If you don't like it, don't support it. But if you do like it, I would encourage you to support it. I would encourage you to go the extra mile. And if you enjoy what we're doing, sign up on Patreon, because we, like, I think scaling in-person conversations about stuff that people care about, right? All these different things, I think, are extremely valuable. And if it can go to the hot topics that people want to care about, tongues, prophecy, yeah. right, Calvinism, all that kind of stuff. We've got all these folks in the same room, and they're and they're going back and forth, and they're respectful, and they're civil, and yeah. they're kind. Because, by the way, I would make it way spicier than the elephant room. Oh, yeah, 100%. But, 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 but let, me, let me get the second point. The second point is, and it's a billboard for local churches for people to plug in. Yeah. A lot, I, get, I get all these DMs. What about, I'm in a church. I can't get a church. Oh, Show Baraka got a church in Atlanta. Where are you at? You in Atlanta? Now we would have yeah. a resource for you guys that there's a pastor from multiple major cities, and we would recast and reshoot it. But that, again, you're talking about twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 to pull something like that off. Yeah, and I think a lot of Christian media, too, especially if you look at the elephant room, Christians just lack the um, ability to let creators and producers create content that feels spicy or entertaining. Mm -hmm. And I think we're getting ready to kind of push over that line. And that's what, I mean, you've been working on for the past few months is that we kind of come to the studio and we're like, okay, how, how can we make this more different than a typical Bible study? Right. How can we make media, like true media, not just yeah. like a resource, a library of yep. Christian ideas? But question for you. Do you think it's actually practical that individuals will be able to create apps like The Chosen? The app? It's possible. I don't know if it's practical. Yeah. It's possible. Anything is possible. But I think, is it, is it, is it, is it going to happen? Mm, probably not for everybody. Yeah. This channel is generally out of an overflow of the conversations we would be having in real life. Yeah. And, and you're way more... You're, you've been having these conversations... For decades. In, for decades in green rooms, and you mm -hmm. talk about all this stuff. I personally don't, and I haven't. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, I get that. So this is just an extension of truly who you are and, and the conversations you have. Yeah. But I'm I, I very for fortunate. I'm very fortunate to have something that is natural to me, and all we got to do is just turn the camera on. Yeah. And if I was hanging out with John Keith, if I was hanging out with Paul Russell, we would be having these conversations. Well, you, I think you're also very fortunate to be interested in having – this these this many conversations about one particular topic because yep. like there is a level you got to be consistent you got to mm -hmm. be able to you know stay on brand in mm -hmm. a sense mm -hmm. for a long period of time mm -hmm. and you genuinely are interested about that a lot of people will fall off because they're so uninterested in having yep. the same conversation yep. over and over again yep. and it says that Simeon blessed God. God.